yeah, my Bud's helmet. Just kind of keep it out. I'm not a big memorabilia guy. I don't even know where my second place medal is from 2011 games. Uh, I'm sure it's in a drawer somewhere, but uh, I don't know, something special about this. I keep it out and kind of just notice it every once in a while. I no longer to live in San Diego, I live in Denver now. Uh, the weather's a little different here, the altitude's a little higher, uh, but it's been great and I've really enjoyed it. I've been here now for just over a year and a half and uh, just loving Denver. Uh, weather's a little spotty, but you know, so is life, so I'll deal with it. Um, got two gyms now in here. We got the garage gym, which I'm about to show you guys, at, uh, show you guys. and then we'll go downstairs and do the basement gym tour for when the weather's a little too cold because the gym, the garage is not heated. Got the whole gym floored. It's not a three car garage, but it is a two car garage. So I got this extra mat from Rogue. So if I do anything heavy, Olympic weightlifting, deadlifting, I dumbbells, kettlebells, I'll normally go on this mat. And I have one downstairs as well. So this thing's awesome. It's not that expensive. Everyone's favorite part of every gym, the cardio machines, right? What would we be without? our famous Echo bike. Obviously Rogue built a tank of a fan bike. And I don't care what anybody says, I'll do this thing all day at 5,000 feet. It is definitely fantastic at 5,000 feet. The air's a little thinner. Uh, I do have two bikers here, skier, and then obviously the rowing machine. All of these are my essentials. If I had to go in order of which one to get, because that is a question I always get, if you're gonna get one machine, what would you get? It would be the Echo bike first, Rover second, Bike earth third, ski or glass. The only reason I say ski or glass is because I hate to stay. It gets my heart rate up the highest. This one's a little bit different. It's not uh, a normal one you see in most gyms, but a Jacob's Ladder. It is 1,000 times harder than a, uh, a Stairmaster. I don't care what Matt Frazier says or anybody else. This thing is phenomenal. I started using this in physical therapy for my knee. Um, it is very low impact and high cardio and quad pump. I mean, this thing will light your legs and your heart rate on fire. You can go really fast on it, or you can go long, slow duration, very low impact. You have to stay focused um, because if you fall, you know, you do have a safety mechanism that turns it on, but it's, uh, it's a phenomenal tool. Even the traditional version probably comes out to about here. Um, so when I saw that they had the smaller version, I checked the measurements and I was like, yup, this is gonna fit. So super stoked to have one of these in the garage. A uh, great way to have low impact on knees, joints, and still get a good leg heart rate pump in. Our golf, our golf club, because uh, you know, now that I'm not really competing anymore, this, this is the main focus is golf. Sandbags, we got the 100 here, uh, 200 and a 150 over there. So those are my staples. I have a 250 bag, I don't have sand in it right now. But uh, now that they're doing, you know, the one rep maxes with these things, I think I should buckle up with my 250. Uh, your Oli bar, your Bella bar for your females. Uh, safety squat bar is a great bar for if you have any sort of uh, arm shoulder injury. It definitely hits your, your quads more than, um, kind of wants to pull you forward. So phenomenal bar if you're gonna get a specialty bar. Uh, just your uh, Ohio bar, actually I think that's the operator bar. Had that bar probably since 2011. I want to say this was in Afghanistan with me, which is really, really cool. Basically, you put your dumbbell in there. Yeah, monkey feet, sorry, monkey feet. And then you put the dumbbell in there and you can do some hip flexor work. You can do some uh, hamstring curls with it. It's actually a really cool tool. They like, sell them on Rogue's website. Got my Bud's helmet here. This is second phase's helmet. Uh, there's a color for each phase, first, second, and third. Um, uh, it goes green, blue, red and basically every week you'd get an inspection. This is my class, 266. Um, and every week you had to have an inspection, you had to redo your helmet over the weekend. Uh, it was a big deal. You had to sand it down, prime it, paint it, put the stickers on, paint the numbers, get your everything lined up, and you had to be perfect. They had, they had an inspection on it, and it was a weekly thing. It was you know, basically just something that you had to take care of uh, because there wasn't a ton of responsibility and buzzers basically show up and 
be able to get kicked in the nuts and take it, you know, and deal with it. And then um, this was the one thing, your room, this, and your uniform that you had to, you know, be able to take care of, right? Show that you had some discipline to do the work. Um, I, I kept the blue, I had, you know, I had obviously all of them, it was basically the same helmet. And then I think in third phase, I ended up getting a second helmet so that I could have one prepared for the week advance. And so that had my red one, um, but I'm just keeping the blue one for right now. So yeah, I just, uh, I, just I just like, I preferred the color blue. Plus second phase was my hardest phase. That was the dive phase where you had to do uh, pool comp and stuff like that. And, and that, sh that just sucked. So um, yeah, my Bloods helmet, just kind of keep it out. I'm not a big, memorabilia guy. I don't even know where my second place medal is from 2011 games. Um, I'm sure it's in a drawer somewhere, but uh, I don't know, something special about this. I keep it out and kind of just notice it every once in a while. Um, it's a cool thing, you know. Cool experience I went through. It was fun. Good times. Uh, farmer carries. These things are fun. If you're a rogue athlete and you go to the games that year, they give you a set of the competition plates from the games. So I have uh, one from every year that I was there. So there's 2014, 2018, there's other ones mixed in, but I do use them because that's what weights are for. Monster flat footed rig. I love this rig. It takes up a pretty small amount, but you can still do a lot with it. Um, you can, if you did, I could, if I took this reverse hyper off of here, the reverse hyper attachment is awesome. Just kind of gets it out of the way. But if I wanted to, I could take it off and then have two people squat from that uh, from that rack. The reverse hyper doesn't get as much love as it should. It becomes a uh, you know a placeholder for all the things. This is my 60 foot rope to do hand over hand pulls with sled. I got the plyo boxes, the three different sets. This is nice. If you need to change it up, if you want to go high boxes, if you want to go box get overs, right where you touch the top of the box. The GHD is a phenomenal tool. You can do so many different things with this. Back extensions, GHD setups, GHRs, glued ham uh, raises and it definitely gets your core extremely taxing, great to add into workouts. So, got the pay him flag, weak legs, equal weak mind flags. The one wheel crew, I prefer chalk, but we got a whiteboard here. Your clock, movable. I like, I like having the one where you can move it, right? Because if you're outside, you can move it. It doesn't have to be attached to one wall, so if you can, it cannot see it. And then we got our dumbbells. Kind of funny up here i have all the uh even numbers so i have 10 20s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s and 100s and then downstairs i have all the uh 35 45s 55 65 75s i don't know why i did that but i kind of like it i got some of these cool fat bells or you actually just like have the grip inside the bell it just changes the distribution of the weight you can do incline you can do bench with them inclines you can do deadlifts like 80s, 124s, 70s, 50s, 35s. Um, got some slam balls. I think from 50, 10 pounds to 50 pounds, I believe. With some random weights in there. Indian motorcycle, because Indian motorcycle is awesome. Uh, Monster light rig with the uh, lap pull down attachment. I have the preacher pad, which is a cricket pad. I'm sorry, not preacher, cricket pad. Gary Cricket, the strong man. And you can do like a chest supported row off of this, which I love for an accessory piece. It kind of goes in and boom. Now you can, I think I just put that a little high for me, but whatever. Put this here, right? Now you can do some chest supported rowing uh, attachment. Super cool piece of equipment. That's newer. Jerry's stud. Let me just pop this thing on here. Add your weight to this thing right here. Put your plate on here. Put your lap pull down. And boom, you got a lap pull down machine. And yes, this rig can stay outside all day long, or all year long, I'm sorry. I get asked that a lot. Do I leave it out or do I take it down for the winter? I don't, I don't. I let, this got snowed on and rained on. Let's head downstairs and check out the, uh, the basement gym. And no house is complete without the recovery, right? We have all the tools we need to beat ourselves up, but we need some recovery tools. So we got our King Cool Plunge. Um, this thing is a beast. It uh, goes down to 39 degrees. 
goes up to 105, I believe, if you want to make it a hot tub. But uh, I, pre I prefer the cold. Has a blower, so you know it's constantly filtering the water. You get in this thing for two minutes every morning. You wake, you get up. It's better than a cup of coffee, almost better than. Uh, and like you feel so good, so happy. Gets a little inflammation out, and it's just a great way to start the day, right? Because no one likes cold water, so why not get in it? So, King Cool Plunge. They're awesome. Check them guys out. He's got a Bluetooth speaker in it. If you want to, you know, for your two minutes, if you need some sort of uh, some music to distract you, you can do that. Over here, we got the sauna. It gets up to like 220. I'll sit in it normally around like 190 to 200 for 20, 20 minutes, almost every day. Not every single day, but almost every day. But yeah, it's a four person sauna. It's awesome. The sauna in the cold tub, you get some really great benefits. Everyone can beat themselves up, but being able to recover, you know, for yourself, for your body, it's just gonna help you last longer, be more fit, be healthier. Lots of great tools, lots of great things out there. Let's go to the basement. Yeah, so here's the basement jipper when it's a little too cold or if I have the cars in the garage and I just need to like run downstairs, I got 15, 20 minutes, knock something out really quick. Uh, it's really nice to have this here in Denver. This past winter we were having negative days pretty often. It was uh, a little ridiculous, but we're here. Five eighths inch flooring and then the extra three quarter inch mat from Rogue for when I go heavy. This is kind of a random set of dumbbells. It's not as clean as it is upstairs, you know, but we got all the basic essentials, 35s, 45, 55s, all the way out to the big boys, the 125s, 115s, they get used so often. Nah, some more slam balls for the boys. The cardio session, a little cardio. We got the true form runner out here. Uh, this thing's phenomenal for you know, if you can't run on pages, that was my hardest thing coming back from was my knee injury. Uh, this thing really helps my knees not to hurt so bad after running, uh, but it also stops running them. So there's that. Um, ski or rower, obviously your Echo Echo bike over here. Um, I was looking at three GHCs. I'm like, I gotta have a GHC downstairs. And this one had the smallest footprint. This is like their top tier going into like universities, I believe, GHD machine. And it's so awesome. It's actually got a really easy lever. You can actually change it with your foot while you're up there doing your GHDs if you need to. Um, and again, the GHD is just a phenomenal tool. I, I feel like it's a must have if you're wanting to get a great, strong core low back. Every year, Rogue gives all their athletes a Christmas gift. This was, uh, I think, two years ago. Not this past year. We got the uh, sledgehammer with your name, Rogue on it, right? You need to do some, some sledging or some mace, you know, just hammer some shit, right? Necessary for every home gym. Uh, we got our adjustable bench here, so we want to do some incline. This is the Rogue half rack, right? It's a monster like half rack. So it takes up a very small amount of space. It does have these clips here you know, to keep it balanced, a little more balanced, but um, you know, you can put, put deadlift pens on this if you need to, a lot of cool things with this, and just takes up a really small amount. The only other thing, I, only other one I kind of thought about getting down here was the, the folding one, uh, but I went with this one instead, I like it. We have the, um, the, the cross member pull-up bar, so you can do different variations of pull-ups up here. I do have it flipped upside down, it only goes the other way. I thought it'd be too close to the ceiling if I flipped it up, so I have it down, and luckily I'm short enough. Tall people might have a little problem with it, but I, uh, I'm good with it, so, you know, pays to be short sometimes. Three different size box, 20, 24, and 30. This is where I did my, my show run through the doorway. A uh, little bit of workout. And I have this little closet back here, just got some a few more dumbbells, dip bar, some bar, um, this is where I put my barbells. I do have that, the mat that they used in the uh, in the semifinals for sled pushes, I thought maybe I'd be able to do it down here. During the winter time, I do miss my sled pushes. So that is the basement gym. Um, got my clock, got a radio, got a, got a, got a speaker in case I need music. Uh, but yeah, that's the home gyms. Um, so two home gyms in Denver. Hope you guys enjoyed that.
and uh, we'll be shooting a lot more videos probably from both from here on out so as always don't forget to pay the man